This video is to introduce you to some of the new features in the ePortal version 4.9 upgrade. This upgrade will provide improvements to the electronic signature agreement process, improvements to some elements within submissions, and the most significant improvement is with the signing process. Electronic signature agreements are necessary for those that want to be able to electronically sign submissions in ePortal. The ESA form can now be pre-populated and downloaded from your profile screen. If you do not currently have electronic signature approval in ePortal, then you can sign into your account, click on your name in the top menu bar, then click the Download Electronic Signature Agreement Template link. This link will download the ESA form pre-filled with the data that you entered when you registered in the ePortal system. You then can review the downloaded form, make sure you have not entered a PO box as the address, print, sign, and date the form. Then mail us the original wet ink signed form to the address on the form. This pre-filled form will reduce the amount of errors, such as users not having registered in the system or not entering the same information in the agreement that was used in the ePortal account. The history screen is where you can locate all of the submissions that you have created in the ePortal system. Your history screen is now defaulted to sort based on the created date of the submissions in descending order. Therefore, the most recently created submissions will be at the top. Previously, the oldest created submissions were at the top. You can still change the column that you want to sort on by clicking on that column. Clicking on the column again will change the sort order. The size limit for each attachment was increased to 100 megabytes. We have the ability to increase it to 500 megabytes per attachment, but we're going to see how well the 100 megabyte limit works for everyone. If you routinely have individual attachments that exceed 100 megabytes, please let me know. Since large files take a while to upload, a progress wheel was added so that you can see that your file is being uploaded. Some forms require a lot of contact information or addresses to be entered such as physical address, mailing address, and billing address. If your form has been set up to allow contact reuse and the information is the same for more than one of the contacts, then you can have the system complete each contact for you instead of having to type each one. If it is set up, then after filling out one contact or address, then you can select the contact autofill pulldown to be able to automatically fill out the next contact or address. The review button previously in the left menu bar has been replaced with the view form button in the top right of the submission overview screen. You will use this button to view the data entered in your submission. Also, you can name your submission on the submission overview screen by clicking on the submission alias. The name you enter here will also appear in your history. You can still edit your submission alias in your history as well. We now have more options on how to set up forms for signature. Previously, we could only pick one type of signature for a form. So if a form was set up for electronic signature, then whoever submitted the form had to have electronic signature approval. With this upgrade, we have the ability to allow electronic signature or hard copy signature on the same form. So if a submission needs to be certified by someone who does not have electronic signature approval in the system, 
then the applicant can pick hard copy signature and be able to submit the submission without the need for an electronic signature. We also have the ability to allow more than one electronic signature on a submission and the ability to allow you to invite others to electronically sign the form. Let's review how some of these options will look when completing a submission. This is what the signing section will look like if your form has been set up for a single electronic signature without invites. It has the certification statement, the acknowledgement statements, and a place to enter your password and security answer. This is how it looked in previous versions for forms that required an electronic signature. If a form has been set up to allow either an electronic signature or a hard copy signature, the signing section will look like this. So once you've completed everything in the form, you can pick between the two. If you pick hard copy signature, then you can scroll down and click the submit form button. The submission goes into a submitting status. The reason that it changes the status to submitting instead of submitted is because the system is creating the copy of record. If for some reason the system hits an error and cannot create the copy of record, then the status will change back to draft. Once you're on the submission overview page, give it a few seconds and then click the browser refresh button. Then ensure that the status of your submission has changed to submitted. You can download the hard copy certification form using the download export button in the right menu bar. In addition, you should receive an email indicating that your submission was submitted and the email will also have a link to the hard copy certification form. With this upgrade, we have the ability to pre-fill the hard copy certification form. As long as the ePortal form you are submitting has been set up to pre-fill, then all you have to do is download the form, review it, to make sure it is correct, have the appropriate signatory authority sign and date the form, and then mail us the original wet ink signed form. When you select digital signature, then click the next button. And if the form has also been set up to allow you to invite others to sign the form, for example, if you are a consultant and need to invite the responsible official to sign the form instead of you signing the form, then you can pick someone else. Scroll down and enter their email address. Then click the send invite button. The system will send them an email inviting them to sign the form. Just because you enter their email address does not necessarily mean that the person has electronic signature approval or that they have an account in the system. The email that they receive will notify them that they need to have an account in the system and be approved for electronic signature. When you view the submission while you are waiting on someone else to apply their electronic signature, then the status will be signing. The status will change to submitting after the person has signed and then submitted after the copy of record has been created. This is what the submission will look like to the person who has been invited to sign the submission. They can view and sign the submission, but they do not have the ability to change anything in the submission. 
To sign the submission, they click the View Signing button, scroll to the bottom, and then click the Sign button. Read the certification statement, check the acknowledgement statements, enter their password and security question, then click the Sign button. If the signer wants the ability to change the submission or share it with others, then you will need to share the submission with them. To share a submission with them, you can scroll down to the Manage Shared Access button on the Submission Overview page. Enter their email address, and if you want them to be able to add more users, revise the submission after submitting and copy as a new submission, then you will also need to check this Can Manage Access to Submission button. When you check this Can Manage Access to Submission button, it gives them the Submission Editor role. Previously, this role was called the Submission Share Editor. If you don't click this box, then they get the Submission Contributor role. With the submission contributor role, they cannot share the submission with anyone else. They cannot revise the submission after it is submitted and they cannot copy it as new, but they can edit the submission and submit the submission. If a form has been set up for role-based signing, then you pick the digital signature, click the next button. The roles of the people that need to sign are displayed. After you click the next button, you are allowed to invite others to sign. Enter the email address of the person that you are inviting to sign. Also, you have the option to add additional instructions. You can also include yourself as a signer. Once you've completed this information, click the Send Invite button. Since you've also selected yourself as a signer, you have the Sign buttons where you can sign for the role that is applicable to you. Also, if for some reason you qualify for both roles, you can sign for multiple roles. Clicking this tab shows you the invitations, it shows you who can sign this form. If you need to resend an invite, there's a button on the right where you can resend that invite. There's also a button where you can invite additional signers. If for some reason you need to cancel the signing, for example, if you need to go back and choose the hard copy signature because your responsible official doesn't have their electronic signature agreement on file, then you click this button up here and cancel the signing. When you cancel the signing, it takes you back to the review step in the submission. And then you can go back to into the signing step and pick what you need to. We hope that you're pleased with the improvements to the system. If you have any questions or need help with the portal, please contact me using the information on the screen.